So MHC class two molecules can bind peptide, present those peptides to T cells, uh, the T cell receptor spe specifically. So are there any rules or constraints about which peptides can be loaded onto MHC class two? There are, and uh, not as strict though with MHC class one. And um, yeah, so let's go into this. So here is an example of an MHC class two molecule. There's the alpha chain, there's a beta chain, and I've drawn a peptide on it. Maybe it's a viral peptide. So um, the uh, typical peptides that you find loaded on MHG2 molecules range from 13 amino acids long to 25 amino acids long. So it's quite a range. So these could be short peptides, they could be long peptides. So um, why is that the case? Well, you can see here this peptide actually overhangs the alpha and the beta chain. Uh, whereas when you went and looked at the uh, animations of, or if you look in the figures in the book of the MHC class one uh, molecule, that has a very closed pocket. It can only fit peptides from around eight to 10 amino acids long there. Not much longer than that because the, pep the pocket is closed. This pocket is open. And so you peptides can overhang the ends. So they can be quite a variety of sizes of peptides held onto by the MHC class two molecule. What about anchor residues? What uh, are there specific amino acids that are located in certain areas of the peptide that are held by the alpha and the beta chains of MHC class two? Well, yes and no. So let's look at a, a real example. Um, let's say this is the MHC class two molecule that is encoded by the DQ genes. So there's the DQA1 gene, version 0501, that's the allele, and then the DQB1 gene, allele 0301. So it turns out that this uh, dimer of the alpha and beta chain will hold onto peptides with a leucine somewhere in the end terminus of the peptide. And that's pretty much it. That's the peptide binding uh, motif. So it's very non-specific. So there are amino acids in the alpha chain that interact w with a leucine. There are amino acids in the beta chain that interact with the um, uh, peptide backbone, but not very specific amino acids. So what you end up um, looking at for um, MHE class two molecules is peptides that load in there are very general. They don't typically follow a well-defined rule like MHC class one molecules. So this peptide binding motif of these HLA DQ genes, uh, it's a leucine that's somewhere near the beginning of the peptide. Uh, so for example, the book gives a, that peptide there below. Um, there's a leucine around position four, and that seems to be required for interaction with the alpha chain, the other peptide, the other amino acids, mm, doesn't really matter wh what they are. The peptide seems to be held onto by the alpha and the beta chain. So the, the MHC class two peptide binding motifs are less well-defined and um, more promiscuous than MHC class one. So when we go back to look at all the different isotypes of HLAs that one could make and put on the surface of themselves, on their selves. Um, yeah, there are eight, up to eight different isoforms of, of uh, MHG class two that you could make. And hopefully each of them differs in the ability to bind peptides. So they're presenting as many different peptides as they can. And uh, they do present a lot of peptides. And again, they're presenting them to uh, T cell receptors on the surface of CD4 positive T cells. So the peptide binding motif, much less well-defined, size of the peptides that are found uh, range uh, quite a bit due to the open pocket of the MHG class two molecule.